For Alvin Ailey, um, the, the, who, who of course founded the company in 1958 on the brink of the civil rights movement, um, one of the, it wasn't just about dance in a sense, it was about access. Um, but he used dance you know, to, to really um, open doors, especially for people of color um, and uh, especially African Americans. He didn't see um, some of the images he wanted to see of, of his people on the concert dance stage. Uh, and he also made it a repertory company uh, so that it didn't just do the works of Alvin Ailey, but he could bring in other choreographers to give them an opportunity to have their voice heard. Um, and so, um, to that end, as someone who knew what it was like to be left out, um, the Ailey School that was founded in 1969, uh, our junior company, Ailey II, uh, which is a sort of way to further the dance education uh, as you build professionals uh, in the field. Um, the arts and education programs that are vast uh, was his way of giving access, especially to young people, that he didn't want this to just be a highbrow experience going to the theater to see the Ailey Company, but he wanted to make sure that it spoke to um, um, to communities that sometimes felt sort of left out of that experience because he knew the power of dance to transform. And so the, the, the um, residencies, the revelations uh, curriculum that we have, um, Ailey Camp, which is a summer day camp for disadvantaged uh, young people um, that we do here in Miami um, and in several other key cities. I always talk about um, Ailey Camp because I think um, that is very much a great example of, of, of uh, what Mr. Ailey's vision was. He started Ailey Camp uh, in Kansas City. It was the last program he implemented before he died in 1989. I think that speaks to uh, how he lived his life and, and the blood that runs through the company. Uh, and so going into the schools and, and, and going into the communities, uh, for me, uh, going back to Miami Northwestern where I took my first, you know, leaps of faith um, is, is extremely uh, important for us. Um, that we don't know if that young person uh, will become a dancer, but that isn't what access and education is all about. Um, it is about giving them some sense of of what is possible, to stimulate their imagination, um, to, you know, it takes courage to take a leap in the air. Will the ground be there <laughs> when I land? Will I land in a way that, that, that <laughs> makes me want to take another leap or not? What, what act of courage that takes, um, those small steps, that's so inherent in dance training. I mean, the first act of courage, one is just getting out there on the floor, right? And then there's usually mirrors. So you, you get a quick response of what, what you're seeing in the mirror and what you don't like about what you're seeing or what you like about it. Or you know, all of those things are part of the training. You know, you start on two legs, usually doing plies, bending the knees, something like that. Then all of a sudden you have to take one foot off the floor and one still on the floor. That's another small act of courage. You're usually holding on to, if you're taking ballet, a ballet bar when you start. You, you let go of the bar that you've been holding on to and now you go to the center of the floor. And now you have to do some of the same movements without the support uh, and the crutch of having the, the bar that you hold on to. And then those things get faster and more complex. Uh, and then you start to do tiny jumps. Just little, we call it petit allegro in, in ballet. Just little, little jumps, little brisk jumps. And then it's the grand allegro when you're doing huge leaps traveling across the floor, sort of hurling yourself into, into the space uh, and into the air, defying gravity. Uh, that process, um, 
is all sort of little acts of courage that by the end amount to uh, uh, something of, 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 of uh, true sort of depth. Uh, and so you're getting those principles are reinforced in the dancer, in the student, uh, in the young person, that if you continue to do this, you will continue to find success. Maybe it's only a little step. You know, maybe it's only letting go of the bar. But that sort of is the foundation for, for, for giving a young person a sense of courage and an appetite to want to explore what is possible. And I believe that's what we do with our arts and education programs of going into school. I mean, it can, on the one hand, like dancing, can look like something that is just fun. And we want the sense of fun. But underneath what they're learning and the signals that they're um, getting from this experience are things that can last a lifetime for them. That's why a lot of dancers uh, who may not end up staying in the career or may you know, dance for a little while, they have the um, ability to become doctors or lawyers. You know, that sense of discipline, that sense of completing the task. Uh, when I teach students, I say something that Carolyn Adams uh, said to me, uh, or to, to a class. Carolyn Adams was my teacher at Juilliard and is still a mentor and friend, and now teaches at the Ailey School. Thank you very much. Guess who hired her? Um, <laughs> um, it was a coup. And um, one of the things she was saying to us that about completing the, the act, um, that when you walk to a door, Part of yourself, before you reach out and grab the handle, before you even arrive at the door, part of yourself already sees yourself on the other side of the door, completing that act. You don't necessarily think about it in a conscious way, um, but it is happening all the time. And as dancers, we have to have that sense of, of, of sort of um, uh, projecting. You know, we have to have that sort of forethought. It's not just happening to us. Uh, we take charge of that on the stage. We give the illusion that it's sort of just happening. You know, I'm like that sometimes in life. I can give the illusion that, and my mother used to say that, because it was so interesting, because you know, as I've gotten older and she hears me speaking all the time and sometimes quoting her or something, some poem that she read, she says to me a lot, like, I didn't know you were listening to me. <laughs> I didn't know you were listening to any of this. And I may have given the illusion that I wasn't, but I was really focused and listening, and I was absorbing all of that. And so even though, I mean, we have these six weeks or whatever a week with these students in the school system, they're listening. They're listening. And who knows what they're going to do with that information. It's wonderful.